of Psalms tonight, Psalm number 119, as we continue our look at uh, the longest chapter in the Bible, Psalm number 119. It's 176 verses. It is uh, divided into groups of eight. And so, obviously, everyone in here knows the math on that. How many groups of eight are there? 176 divided by eight. Come on, quickly. 22. I'm really just teasing you. I didn't expect anyone to know that already. <laughs> but uh, it's 22 because there are 22 uh, letters in the Hebrew alphabet. And they are all... Uh, basically uh, organized with, if you'll notice in your Bible, like above where we're going to be at, verse number 81, um, it, in, in my Bible it has a little Hebrew letter there and it says the word calf. Uh -huh. And so that's, uh, it's going along with that Hebrew letter. It's kind of, that part of it kind of reminds me of the book of Lamentations, you know, where the first two chapters each have 22 verses in them. And the last two chapters each have 22 verses in them. And the middle chapter has 66 verses in them. And uh, it's, it, again, it's going along with the Hebrew alphabet uh, is why Jeremiah did it that way. And so it's just, it's interesting, the Hebrew uh, writer. So I'm kind of reminded of Lamentations. I'm also reminded, uh, this message tonight, I'm reminded of Peter. And we're going we're gonna to find our place over there here in a minute over in first. Uh, first, well, really, we're just going to Second Peter, but this whole message reminds me of First and Second Peter. If I could uh, say that, you you may see the the resemblance here in just a minute. But uh, here we are, Psalm one nineteen, verse number eighty one. Verse number eighty one. The psalmist says, "My soul fainteth for thy salvation." But I hope in thy word. Let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for the opportunity to meet together tonight in your name. Lord, I just ask you to bless our time together. Just empty me of self and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I pray, dear Lord, that you'll speak to each and every heart here tonight through your word. I pray that uh, you would have your way with us tonight. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. My soul fainteth for thy salvation. But I hope in thy word. Uh, when we Baptists use the word salvation, 99.9% .9 of the time, if, we're, if it's not 100% of the time, we're talking about soul salvation. We're talking about the salvation of a person's soul. Amen? Uh -huh. But we also teach you that there is no waiting on that. It happens instantaneously uh, when a person receives Jesus Christ. Now, uh, for those of you who are saved tonight uh, and... and uh, this life has wearied you a little bit, and uh, you're kind of tired of all the junk of this life, because uh, there is a lot of junk in this life. Uh, you start going, man, when am I going to go to heaven? <laughs> you start looking forward to that day, don't you? A little bit. In fact, the more and more you know about heaven and just the peace that's going to be there, no sickness, no death, nobody grows old, uh, uh, no, no anger, no hostilities, no bad attitudes, nothing. No, uh, no road rage, uh, no rudeness, uh, no more balding, possibly. Hey, man. Uh, which I don't know. I mean, that, that's going to be kind of weird because I'm looking for a bald guy named Elisha in heaven. You know, I want to meet him. So I mean, how am I going to recognize him? <coughs> but uh, I, you know, heaven's going to be pretty perfect, and so there is an application to that. As far as, man, we just we get to where we, we faint for His salvation. But there's also an application um, and in this life when we're going through a hard time. Or when we're going through a uh, trial of some sort. And that's one reason I'm reminded of Peter. Uh, the book of 1 Peter is about trials. Mm -hmm. um, and he talks, he talks to him about the value of those trials and what they do for, uh, for the Christian. And he was writing 1 Peter, warning the early church... Uh, that they were going to go through some serious fiery trials. And uh, he said, think it not strange, the fiery trial uh, that is to try you. So, you know, First Peter kind of comes to mind here. You know, when we go through hard times, it seems like they just drag along, doesn't it? And it just seems like they take forever. Uh, when, you're, uh, <laughs> when you're a child and you're... Uh, dad or mom 
is is uh, you're you're on their bad side, so to speak. Maybe you've done something wrong or you didn't do a chore like they told you to do. Man, the time seems to tick by so slowly. And you know a, a possible whooping is on the way or or some sort of correction is on the way. And man, it just, the time can't. I, I can remember if I got in trouble at school, uh, I would uh, get a, a, a whooping by my mom. If I didn't get a whooping by my mom, or if, okay, let me clarify. If I did or if I didn't, it didn't matter. When dad got home, <coughs> I was getting another one. And uh, I dreaded that. Boy, the time just eat by. I mean, uh, that day, those were some long days. Those were some long days. Now, once it was over with, once the, you know, once it was over with, okay, now I'm, now I'm on good terms with mom and dad again. This is good. You know, I'm going to try to fly straight and, and uh, not, not give them cause for correction again. Uh, but man, the, the, the hours drug by uh, with dread there. And when you're in a, a bad situation, when you're going through trials, it just seems like they take forever. It just seems like, it, it seems like the Lord is dragging His feet. And I'm not saying that disrespectfully. I'm saying that's what it seems like. It seems like the Lord is dragging His feet. But the psalmist reminds us He's going to trust in God's Word. Yeah. And he says, but I hope in thy word. And the, the, the Bible word hope means expectation. It's not like we throw up a hope so. Uh, it means a happy expectation. He is, uh, well that's blessed hope, is a happy expectation. But when he says, I, I hope in thy word, he's saying, I expect thy word. In other words, I trust your word. Lord, you said you were going you, you to save me from this situation. You said you were going to deliver me from this situation. I'm trusting you with that. Uh, because, Lord, I've been serving you. I've been walking with you. You said you would uh, deal uh, with things uh, in my life. And so I'm trusting your word uh, on that. It says in verse number 82, Mine eyes fail... For thy word, saying, oh, my eyes are talking now, saying, Will when when wilt thou comfort me? Again, Lord, it's like you're dragging your feet. Uh, I I trust your word, but I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. Uh, I believe it, but I'm having a hard time seeing it. My <laughs> eyes are failing me. Uh, I tell you, you know, you read. I I, I mentioned it. Uh, uh, Sunday night, when you look at uh, the book of Revelation and everything that's coming in the future and, and everything that's going to happen with the Antichrist and everything, and, and you look at all these problems that are, are just mounting in the world that we live in, yeah. uh, if you went on sight, it doesn't look so good. It's, it's dark. I mean, there's dark days ahead right. if you're reading the signs. There's very dark days. The people in power do not care about the people that they are That's in right. power over. They don't. That's right. I dare say they have it for a long time. <laughs> um, people don't care about each other. Uh, people are mean and 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 just mean to one another. And uh, you know, I went down to the gas station yesterday, and I was out here at the church doing a few things. I ran down to the gas station to, to get some uh, uh, sodas. Came back, but while I was down there. Just lots of people in this little small town gas station in and out, and all of them ha have this angry look on their face. They're all very fierce. I think that, that would be the Bible word for it, very fierce, very angry. Uh, they kind of give off this vibe like, don't cross me. They give off this, you know, and, and, and maybe I'm mistaking some of them. You've got to be careful reading a judging book by its cover. You do. But I tell you, a lot of them, I'm not mistaking it. <laughs> they're, in a, they're in a bad mood, and, and there's just a bad attitude, and it's... It's, it's, it looks like dark days. So if I were going on what my eyes see, uh, well, okay, what am I looking at right now? I'm looking at a bunch of empty pews. I'm glad it's not fully empty. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I don't want to be a negative person. But I'm pretty sure every church has this deal where they wish their pews were fuller. Yeah. I wish they had, you know, I'm sure every church wishes they had the problem of, oh, not enough seating today, let's pull out the chairs. I'm certain every church wishes that because all of us want people to desire God. And we're wanting people to desire the Word of God. Amen? We're wanting people to get right with the Lord before it's too late. Right. 
So if I, you know, if I'm just going on what I see, I'm, I'm, I'm glad the Bible tells us we're not supposed to be walking by sight. We're to be walking by faith. Right. Yeah. And just because what we see doesn't seem to be going so good, uh, I, I tell you, he says, I'm going to hope in thy word. I'm going to, I'm going to expect in thy word. Because look at, look at verse number 83. The psalmist says, for I am become like a bottle in the smoke. We all know what that means. No. <laughs> Uh, that's not a phrase we use much, is it? Uh, a bottle in the smoke. But look at what he says. Yet do I not forget thy statutes. I am not going to forget the Word of God. I'm going to keep trust in the Word of God. A bottle in the smoke, um, best I can, I can figure out, uh, one Bible commentator had it like this. Bottles in this day would have been made from leather. And a, a, a leather bottle uh, constantly around a, a fire, around smoke. Uh, will crack and harden over time, and it will uh, lose its vigor, and uh, the outside of that bottle uh, will will darken and uh, and change over time. But the contents of the bottle can mature and can get better and better and better. Okay, so it's it's referring to the outside of the bottle. The psalmist is saying the outside of me is getting weary; my eye faileth. I'm, I'm getting worn out. Uh, uh, my soul fainteth. Where is thy salvation? I'm like a cracked bottle that's aging on the outside. But on the inside, I'm not going to forget thy statutes. On the inside, I'm not going to forget your word. He goes on, he says, verse 84, How many are the days of thy servant? When, see, see how it's all about, you know, the Lord's dragging his feet? When wilt thou execute judgment? on them that persecute me. How many are the days of thy servant? He could be saying a couple of things with that. He could be saying, hey Lord, I don't have long to live down here. I sure would like for you to do something while I'm young. That could be what he's saying. He also could just be saying, man, the days of my life seem to be dragging by. It seems so long. You're not executing judgment quickly enough, Lord. This is why it reminds me of Peter 2, because this sounds a lot like 2 Peter chapter 3. And we're going to go there here in a minute. He goes on, he says in verse 85, The proud have digged pits for me, which are not after thy law. The proud. These are people who are proud against God. Everybody has struggles with pride, I believe. I don't believe there's anyone that doesn't struggle with it. Some people struggle with it more than others. It's kind of like anger. Everybody struggles with anger to a different degree. Some people are nine. Some people are two or three. But everyone has it. Pride's the same, same way. Pride, uh, the Bible says, God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. And that's why we as Christians need to remember that and try to battle pride in our own lives. It, we're wise to humble ourselves. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. Amen. And so we're wise to do that. I'd say on a daily basis and recognize Amen. it in our own life. These are people who will not admit their pride against God. And they, they won't humble themselves to God. They will not humble themselves to God's Word. Uh, they want nothing to do with Him. And so the proud have digged pits for me. Pits is plural. Uh, when, the, when, when the God haters and the Bible haters come after Christians, it, it'll be multiple pits. <laughs> they will have multiple ways of coming after you, which are not after thy law. They're proud against God's Word. Look at verse number 86. The psalmist says, All thy commandments are faithful. In all of this, I'm, I'm going to still believe that God's Word is faithful. God hasn't let me down. They persecute me wrongfully. <clears throat> if we Christians could get our mind wrapped around that, this is so hard for us sometimes. You're going to be persecuted no matter what you do. Right. If you do wrong, if you do wrong in this life as a Christian, if you want to go off and live your own thing and do your own thing, you're going to find some persecution in it. But even living for the Lord, you're going to find some persecution in it. Sometimes people, I mean, you're going to see, they really don't like the Lord. That's right. I'm glad that's not always the case, but it's getting more and more frequent. Mm -hmm. uh, I re this was a while back. I don't even know why this, this came to mind. This was you know, two or three years ago. 
Um, but I remember taking one of my kids to the ER in Idabel. I don't remember which kid it was. You guys, there's too many of you. Um, it, it might have been Brennan. It might have been Brinley. I can't remember. And I can't remember how long ago it was. But anyway, there was uh, this, this nurse in there. It seemed like a nicer, older lady. Uh, she really thought that my kid was cute, and she, she you know, she would smile at the kid and, and was really friendly and all that. And then I mentioned something about being a Christian. Before that, she was completely friendly with us. Total demeanor was very friendly. And I mentioned, uh, we, you know, I'm a Christian, something along those lines, and was just talking to her about it, just kind of, you know, putting it out there. I mean, her whole demeanor changed mm -hmm. to coldness. I mean, almost uh, had a demonic feel to it. And then I noticed a couple of tattoos on her wrist and things. Uh, uh, I'm not, uh, okay. They look to be possibly satanic in origin. And I went, really? Just the mention of him? Yeah. Just the mention of him makes you that? And I mean, I started paying really close attention to how she was dealing with my kid. Because right. uh, I'm going, okay, if you really don't like Christ that much, uh, are you willing to do something unethical? Yeah to my child. I, I mean, and she didn't, okay? She didn't do anything unethical, but I mean, just the coldness. Wasn't polite with us after that. Didn't visit with us after that. Didn't say anything to us after that. In fact, I think she sent another nurse in there to tell us, uh, you know, we were dismissed or whatever. But, uh, I mean, I, I tell you, I wasn't being overbearing. I, I wasn't, you know, it's crazy how people are, uh, uh, there are enemies of God out there. Uh -huh. And I mean, they're devoted some people are very devoted to this. They persecute me wrongfully, he says. And then he makes a request to the Lord. He says, help thou me. We need the Lord's help, don't we? Right. The enemies are, are too much for us. We're outnumbered. We're going to need the Lord. It goes on, it says, verse number 87. Look at, how, look at how far this has gotten. He said, they had almost consumed me. Upon earth. Have you ever been there? I hear people all the time, we use this phrase, well, I hit, I've hit rock bottom. Okay. Most of the time when someone says that, in fact, every time someone says that, that's an overstatement. I don't, we haven't hit rock bottom. There's always further down you can go. You really don't want to keep going. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad you've hit a stopping point and you're recognizing it, but it can always be worse. It can. But I don't think the psalmist is using hyperbole here when he says, they had almost consumed me upon the earth. Listen, we as Christians, sometimes we, we go, Lord, why are you letting this happen? Do you realize how far the Lord can let it go? Yeah. I'm thankful uh, for, for His mercy. I'm thankful for when He intercedes. But listen, the Lord can allow us to go to the brink. And uh, it's for our own good. You say, well, Brother Joe, I've never been to the... Well, praise the Lord. You might want to be thankful for everything you have. Start counting your blessings. Be glad you haven't gone through some Job experiences. Right. Maybe you just had a taste of it. It's not very pleasant. But even though this man, I believe it's David has almost been totally consumed upon the earth. Look at this. But I forsook not thy precepts. Uh -huh. yeah. I'm going to keep trusting God's Word. God's Word hasn't failed me. God's Word hasn't changed. Just because I'm going through these trials, just because I'm going through these hard times, just because I've got some tribulations, just because I've got some bad things, just because it seems like everything might be going wrong, and most of the time that's our perspective is off, I'm not going to forsake His precepts. Yeah. I'm going to stick with the Lord. I'm not going to forsake God. That's right. Every trial you go through, there's two actors acting upon it. And I don't mean actors as in they're playing a part. I, I mean actors, they're acting upon it. Number one, God is trying to use that trial to build you and refine you and strengthen you right. in a way that you've never been strong. Yeah. The devil is trying to use that same trial to absolutely break you. Right. And get you to quit on God. Yeah. Amen. And try to break your faith. Mm -hmm. Oh, it didn't work on David though. To the point he was almost consumed uh -huh. upon the earth. 
I forsook not thy precept. Praise the Lord. I'm glad David didn't quit, aren't you? Yeah, amen. What a blessing he was to Israel. What a blessing he was to his own people. What a blessing he is to us. Uh -huh. I'm glad he didn't quit on God. He, in the, uh, verse number 88, the last uh, verse of these eight, eight verses, look at this. He asked the Lord, he says, Quicken me after thy loving kindness, so shall I keep the testimony of thy mouth. Quicken me, Lord, because you love me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Quicken me. Br bring me back to life, Lord. Uh, fill me with your life. Uh, encourage me. Revive me. Quicken me after thy loving kind of Lord, because you love me. That's a good reason, isn't it? Uh -huh. I tell you what, his faith hasn't broken, has it? He believes the Lord has loved him in spite of his circumstances. Quicken me after thy loving kindness. And then he says, and I'm going to keep the testimony of thy mouth. Yeah. I'm going to obey you. Uh -huh. I'm going to do what you say, Lord. Fill me with life. Revive me. Lord, revive me and I will keep your commands. I, I will do what you say. I will trust your word. Let's go over to 2 Peter really quick. 2 Peter chapter number 3. And verse number 3. See if this doesn't sound like our day. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers. That means they're scoffing at the Bible, scoffing at God, walking after their own lusts. And saying, where is the promise of His coming? What a question. See, David was wrestling with, Lord, why are you dragging your feet? Lord, when are you going to act upon I tell you what, the scoffers of God ask the same question. When is Jesus coming? <laughs> Where is the promise of His coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. They're saying nothing has changed. Jesus isn't coming back. It goes on, it says, verse 5, For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. In other words, they're ignorant of the original creation. Verse number 6, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. That's the days of Noah. They are willingly ignorant of God's judgment on this planet. Right. And that He has a right to do that. That's right. Tell you what, people are... Uh, this, this is our day. People are willingly ignorant of that. Look at verse number 7. But the heavens and the earth which are now, by the same word, are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. In other words, time doesn't mean the same thing to God that it means to us. Yeah. Verse number 9, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise. He's not slack. He's not dragging His feet. Right. He has a promise of salvation, right? Right. His soul was fainting for the Lord's salvation. Listen, the, the Lord is not slack concerning His promise of salvation. There's coming a day He is going to get us all out of here. Yeah. And it's quicker than you think. That's right. He's not slack concerning His promise. At that time, that will also, that's also a promise of judgment. Because it'll, it'll be the judgment of men on this earth. He's not slack concerning that promise. As some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, we're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Right. He goes on and talks about the day of the Lord's going to come as a thief in the night. Look at verse number 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? In other words, Whatever trials you're going through, right. whatever hardships you're going through, the Lord is not dragging His feet. That's right. Trust His Word. Mm -hmm. Trust God's Word. The quickening that He's doing in your life is to produce obedience. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise. The trial of the outside is to refine the inside. Uh -huh. 
So if you'll keep that in mind, I, I don't know all the trials that everybody's going through. I know some of them. I know some of your trials. I'm telling you, the Lord's trying to work a work in your life. Yeah. That's worth more than gold. Yeah. Worth more than the refining of gold. Right. Well said. Mm -hmm. And if you can keep that perspective, just trust the Lord and hold on to Him, and He's going to deliver you. The day of deliverance is coming. Yep. He's not dragging His feet. Yeah. I promise you. Yeah. He's not dragging His feet. Let's close with a word of prayer, and we'll take a look at our prayers. Heavenly Father.